people. Um, hey, Tay, are you commandeering the... Um, I am. I am. All right. I'm also letting people in, so bear with me here. We will. We will. We absolutely will. Yeah. Okay, we've got some. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for doing that, Nick. That's in the chat. Oh, perfect. That's what I was looking at. All right. Um, just a real uh, quick. Let me be clear about that, but it, it will be here in a few minutes. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, real quick reminder that bold actually starts today. The bold pivot um, session starts today. And it again is just $99 at this point in time to join and um, they've revamped it even since the original bold pivot. So if you didn't take it the last time or if you did and you're looking for a different experience, you know, they really listened to people's suggestions on how to improve the bold pivot um, and kind of revamped that in a way that makes sense for the market of now. So um, if you have any interest, it starts today. It's from one to three, I think this afternoon. So you still have time to hop in if you have interest in that. And then in, in addition to Bold, there's some great classes that are going on on both KW Connect and within our region. Um, still everything via um, Zoom for all of the sessions. So upcoming next week is the Business Planning Clinic. This is a regional event um, held via Zoom with Debbie Frapp. I've not had her as an instructor, but I've taken this class and I love it. Um, if you've got interest in setting up a great business plan for the upcoming year, it's a great session to join in on and you don't have to travel to the cities. So that's an even better benefit. So um, the, I can send you the link if you want that information for the business planning clinic next week. And then make sure you check out um, KDB Connects live streams for the upcoming um, sessions this week. And then next week, there's some great sessions for a variety of topics. So if you are looking for additional training, you can't run short um, by hopping on to KW Connect. So make sure you check out that live training um, link in, under the resources tab. And then just wanna send out a reminder. So Christina sent out this um, trivia contest that we are running on our Facebook page. So this is for all of our locations. Um, all of our agents can share this graphic out to your friends and clients as a reminder to come to the Facebook page the week of Halloween. Um, each day we are going to post a different Halloween trivia question and then the winner of that um, day will get a gift card sent out to them. So uh, make sure that you're sharing this out to your friends, your clients, anybody that might want to join in on these this um, upcoming trivia contest. And then just a quick reminder for some quick reminders of COVID procedural reminders. Um, so, you know, we're still seeing spikes within the Midwest at this point in time. So wanna remind people to continue to monitor your health daily and stay home if you're not feeling well, um, wear a mask, if you're in the common areas of the offices, practice safe social distancing and then practice good hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette. Um, unfortunately, I think we will continue to see th these requirements for a little bit of time as we navigate through um, the flu season and whatnot. So want to do our part to help our first responders and those helping those with COVID um, and stay safe and healthy as we can. <laughs> You were just waiting to use that photo, weren't you, for something? Yeah. Yeah. I actually framed it in my office. <laughs> That'll teach me. That will teach me. It's so good, though. So good. <laughs> Perfect for the slide. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, so, yes, again, just um, re reminders um, of those procedures in our office, but also keep in mind um, what you're doing out in the field as well. So if you're in vehicles with other clients, please wear masks with them as well. Just stay safe and healthy. I'm curious, are agents, uh, you guys, since, I mean, I mean, I haven't, can't remember the last time I showed a house, are, uh, are you and our clients wearing mask, masks while showing houses? Is that, is that, that's. I, is I make it mandatory. Okay, I was gonna say, is, is that required at this point or is that just voluntary? Like you're choosing to do that? Required? I imagine it's all voluntary, but I mean. 
Yeah, I would say. Your just clients just, are following suit though? Nobody, nobody complains. Yeah, good, good. I'm glad to hear that you guys are being safe. Okay. I know that Katie's letting other people in, so there may yeah. be a slight delay from time to time. Okay, so we have a couple of cappers since our last team meeting. So Carol Thomas, Bruce, um, also Bruce Beckley cap. So congrats goes out to the two of them. That's amazing. How does that feel, Bruce? Awesome. I yeah, <laughs> I bet it does. I bet it does. That's a great feeling. Yeah, I, I never expected to do it in my second year. So I just, I'm shocked. So yeah, I can't wait to go over some of your numbers and share some of your numbers because, you know, what you have done in a short amount of time is really incredible. So congrats and congrats to Carol as well. You guys happened to see her or want to shoot her a message and congratulate her. I think the office posted something um, and I, I always post something as well. And then just a reminder that the rest of the team meetings for the rest of this year are going to be um, interviews with some of our leading agents that have excelled in these different areas and hoping to just provide great value um, hearing from your peers on things that they've found success in. So make sure you're plugging into the remainder of the team meetings for this year so you don't miss out on this information. We are still recording these sessions. Um, so if you can't make it to the meeting at the time that it's um, happening, just check back on our Facebook page for the recording and make sure you're plugging into those meetings. And today on our um, agenda is Bruce Beckley. So the gentleman we just talked about capping. We're excited to have your wealth of knowledge today, Bruce. Well, yes. I, I've got a lot to learn, but I've learned a lot. So I guess that's good. Yeah, <laughs> boy, never a more truer statement in real estate, Bruce, than what you just said. Someone having been in the business almost 20 years, I feel like there's still a lot to learn, but I've learned a lot. And so one of the things that I love about real estate is it is that never ending growth, you know, that you have access to if you choose to. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to uh, see that you've, you've grasped that concept early on. Um, does that lead us into our convo with Bruce, Katie? It does. Okay, so perfect handoff. So Bruce, again, we want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. And I know you've been really busy this year. Yes, I um, have. Despite the challenges that you know um, all of us have been faced with, you've managed to stay really busy, as have you know the majority of our agents, which I think is just a real testament to the type of people that we get into business with. So, um, thanks for being here. And Bruce, you got into the business. I have the notes here in front of me, but I'm going to let you kind of share your story. Do you mind just kind of giving us a little background on what brought you to real estate? How long you've been in the business? Okay. Yeah. I. Uh... I got into real estate or thought about real estate many years ago. And then I worked at a company called Technograph Corporation here in Winona. And I worked there for 35 years. Well, the last three years or so, um, it was difficult to work in. And I think part of it was I had been there so long and I just needed something new. Um, so uh, I decided to go after my license and um, that took a little while, but I got it done. And I wanted just something to different where I could be my own boss and basically and have my own agenda. And that's where I got started. And I also am dual licensed. I'm licensed in Wisconsin also because living here in Winona, we're right across the river. I'm from Fountain City, which is right across the river. I know a lot of people over there. So I thought it would be a benefit um, to have both licenses. So I went after the, my Wisconsin and I got that in, in March of this year. So, um, or actually February, I think it was. So, yeah, so that's why I just, uh, I needed a change and that's why I, I went after it and I'm glad I did. I wish I would have did it years ago. But. <laughs> We're grateful you did as well. Now, have you done any business over in Wisconsin yet? Are you finding that you're doing much business over there? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty busy. I've had uh, two li or one listing and uh, one sale in the cross. I had a uh, sale in Madison. Uh, I've got a couple clients in Eau Claire right now. So yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. 
Okay, good. Good to know um, from the perspective as well for the agents who, you know, aren't licensed over there knowing that if they end up with a Wisconsin referral, you know, we've got the Onalaska office, but we also do have agents in Winona as well that are licensed over in Wisconsin. So correct. Thanks for sharing that with us. All right, I'm going to break on you a little bit. I hope that doesn't make you too uncomfortable. But, and, um, you know, as I look at your multi year trends report, Bruce, and, and uh, for those of you who aren't aware of what that is, I think most of the folks on here are. Um, that is the report that we look at that um, I don't know how many years it goes back five, six, Katie, maybe more. Um, but, uh, you started in December of 2018. So looking at your numbers, your year over year growth in essentially all the areas, but the first one I look at here, Bruce, is in closed units, you're up 106.3%. You have doubled the number of units that you have closed um, this year compared to this time last year. The, the closed sales volume from those closed units um, is up 122.9%. Listings taken up 250%. Listings taken volume up 404.4%. So I'm guessing what that story is telling me is that your average sales price must have uh, increased. Would you say that that's accurate? Yeah, I would say, yep. Okay. So, you know, suffice it to say, I could go over all your numbers, your GCI, which is a which is a really important one, right? To all yep. ages, your your gross commission earned up 123.4%. So yeah, I'd say you made a good decision. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you feel the same way. Yes. Um, and you know, part of the reason why we're we're wanting to have conversations with uh, you know agents such as yourself is to find out you know what's what's the secret sauce? What have you been doing? Is there one, or is it sticking to the fundamentals? So if it's okay with you, I'm just going to take you through a series of questions that will perhaps help us unveil how you've managed to, you know, see excess su success rather in uh, a relatively short amount of time. Is that all right? That's right. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, um, first question for you, Bruce is. What were some of the things that you did as a brand new agent to get business? That that part for me when I started out was tough because I didn't really know where to start because um, I was new and um, so but I went after the business card uh, way of doing things at first. Um, got business cards. I hand out a lot of business cards and I still do that today. I've gone through a lot of business cards and in my short time. Um, and actually my wife kind of gets frustrated with me because I'm always handing them out and she doesn't think I need to. But but anyway, I, I do that a lot. And that's where I really got started with um, handing them out no matter where I was, especially to people I knew, not maybe very well, but I did know them. So I would hand them out. And um, that's where I started with basically was business cards. Then I got into newspaper ads because um, I needed, I felt I needed to get my face out there more. Uh, so I went to newspaper ads and then Facebook ads. Um, and it wasn't until after I went to Bold last year that I did the call, call, call thing. Um, and I think that was the hugest thing for me was to be comfortable making calls. Um, and basically that has I feel making the calls has changed my business totally because I'm not afraid to do it. I'm not afraid of getting rejected. And just because I get rejected doesn't mean I stop. It makes me push on farther and faster. Um, so basically um, call to me, calling is huge. And even with my current clients that I've had that we've had closings with, I touch base every six weeks. So that's basically what I did to start with, so. Okay, so many good nuggets there. I wanna circle back to a couple of them if that's okay. Yep. Um, but before I do, cause this will help me frame um, some of my next couple of questions for you is what would you say is your, cause you, you mentioned several different um, lead generation sources, business cards, yep. paper ads, phone calls, polls. Um, what would you say is your best uh, lead source right now that you're using? 
from a consistency standpoint? So what are you most consistent with and what seems to be getting the best return? I would say calling. Okay. Okay. So are you still, you're still doing the business cards. It sounds like much to yep. your chagrin. Yep. Um, is there a particular script that you use when you give out your business card, Bruce, or can you give us a couple examples of scenarios where you might be giving your business card to a stranger? Basically what I do is I don't have any, I don't have any scripts that I, you know, like the written scripts. I just go off of what I feel comfortable at that time when I see that person. Um, and I just, first of all, I just do it in a little process. I get to know them a little bit for a few seconds. And then I just kind of ask him, you know, I'm a realtor. Are you, you know, ever looking to buy or sell? If you are, you know, please, here's my card. Please contact me. I'll step, uh, I'll get you through the process step by step. Uh, any questions along the way, please let me know. It's so a simple I, that, right? It's, it's a simple. Like it's a simple thing. Okay. So uh, what I'm hearing is you don't overthink it. You haven't necessarily internalized some big fancy schmancy script, right? For certain situations. Right. Yep. Um, it sounds to me like you're just focused on the person, perhaps getting to know them a little bit, and then just not being afraid to ask for the business and hand them your card. Correct. Yep. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. Um, keep it easy, right? Or keep it yep. simple. Yep. Um, how about newspaper ads? Are you still doing those? Do you feel like they're effective from the perspective of, you know, I was of that frame of mind too as a newer agent and uh, did it for the first several years I was in the business, more so for name recognition. I can't remember personally the last time I ran a newspaper ad, but but also I recognize that Winona is different. I'm curious to hear if you're still doing newspaper ads, number one, and if you are, are you still doing it more for a name recognition perspective or are you legitimately finding that you're getting leads from those? Um. In Winona here, I haven't done a newspaper ad for quite a while. However, uh, in fact, I just talked to somebody the other day. I met him in the store and I said, we were talking and I said, you know, he asked what I was doing. I said, I'm a realtor. And he goes, oh yeah, that's right. I remember seeing your picture in the paper or your ad in the paper. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a situation where I thought, well, okay, that, that was worth it. Mm -hmm. um, but I have run more ads in Wisconsin just because I'm newer over there and I want to get the word out. So there are a couple papers over there that I run ads in. Um, not just put my name out there, but just I put a little scenario with it of, you know, looking to buy or sell, let me know. Um, now's a great time. So basically just to, to see if I can get my name out there that people know who I am over there. I just want them to know that I'm a realtor now. So. Okay. so you're definitely getting the name recognition and I would agree with you. I think the paper is good for that. You know, when you first get to the business initially, um, of all the times that you've run ads, do you feel as though you've ever picked up a piece of business specifically from one of those ads? Um, I know I have two of two of my sales have been from the ads okay. that people seen my in the paper and they called me. Um, but that's just two out of, you know, uh, I don't know how many ads I've run in Winona here and I've run six ads in Wisconsin. So, you know, I don't know if I will continue to do newspaper ads, mm -hmm. um, just because, yeah, I don't know if I, if I'm getting that much off of them and they're not cheap. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I remember spending an awful lot of money on newspaper ads and being really happy when everything tra transitioned to the internet. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, but I do, you know, I, I do recognize that, um, you know, they can be of value from time, to, from time to time. And also too, I think just depending on the area that you're in, I know that it's still really popular in Winona. Um, I don't know uh, so much about Rochester. Any of our Rochester peeps, uh, done newspaper ads, anybody that's on or find that they've been effective at all? Anybody? I, I used to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we used, um, when, when Rochester was a separate insert and, you know, people could get it for free and it was published weekly. So you could put your open houses in there, your listings, you know, or just run an ad. Um, 
And as a Keller Williams group, we did a, I think we agreed on a page or a half page or something like that. So it was like $33 and 50 cents a month. Okay. To That's run awesome. one ad a month. Exactly. You just split the cost with some agents. And that was, um, it was worth it. I thought because it was such a low price. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? Like $33, you hardly even miss that in a month. Yeah. And then the, it was mostly just top of mind awareness. So I would put listings in there. Sometimes I would just have to say they were sold. Other times I would say, Hey, I've got a buyer who needs this. What have you got? And I had people reach out to me. Um, can you guys still see me? Yep. Yep. I don't know what just happened, but my, I just got a blue screen here, we but, um, but anyway, then there was a, so what I found was running those ads, reached out to people where maybe I did not have their email address, but they were people I knew, especially older people. And, you know, they would be the ones that say to me like, oh, I saw your ad and things like that. And then when I started running um, stuff with my tagline, the fun realtor, I had a lot of people would be like, hey, there's the fun realtor. And so I know that people saw it. I, um, other than when I was specifically looking for, I need a four bed, two bath rambler in Northwest Rochester. I, I wouldn't say I got calls exactly from the ad, but I would still do them if we still had that option. But I'm not going to spend $150 to be in the yeah. new section of the post bulletin, which is more like in the classifieds. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for feeding that or sharing that feedback. Um, always good to know, keep in the back of your mind. And yeah, I love the buying power of getting a group of people together to make it a little bit more um, uh, affordable. Um, Bruce, going back to, you know, I'm curious, I believe it's just been you in your real estate business. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. Um, so, so that's the first part of the question. Like, is like, what is your team comprised of today? And moving into 2021, um, do you have plans of changing that at all? Uh, yeah, my team basically is just me. Um, I do everything from start to finish. Uh, I have noticed that now because of how busy I have gotten this summer and fall. Um, it's hard to do a lot. It's hard to do everything by yourself uh, and keep everything straight and, and then keep pushing onward. Um, so depending how things go, I may look at, at doing something different down the road here um, if, if I stay busy, which I anticipate I will. And, uh, and I'm gonna push for that. But yeah, it, it's, I was to the point where, boy, I, have, I was so busy that I didn't know if I could do everything and then keep on the front side of things to keep it going. So, yeah, so. That, that's the key, right? Is yep. I, I think it's a, um, it's a danger zone that single agents fall into or easily fall into often is you get so busy with the work that's in front of you and concentrating on those transactions and seeing them through the, you know, process or the chain, if you will, to closing that you take your eye off the most important part of your business, which is continuing to lead generate, man, I was guilty of that for years, um, you know, still can be. Um, but I, I think the key to that is being cognizant of it. And then when you get to that point, um, you know, asking others who have perhaps been through that, um, or, you know, leaning on leadership, like I would love to help coach you and have some conversations with you offline at some point, um, about what that could look like for you in 2021, if that's something that you're interested in. So, yes, uh, definitely. Cause I'm, I'm nervous about that and yeah. I don't want that to hurt me instead of help me. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's just so, um, awesome that you're recognizing and identifying that right now already. So, um, we can continue that conversation. I look forward to doing that if you want. Yep. Um, what does your typical day look like? Um, are you someone who's really structured? Um, and if so, do you mind sharing your schedule with us? Yes, uh, my typical day is pretty much the same thing every day. Um, and it, I'm pretty much of a structured guy. I gotta have things in order so I know, cause otherwise I'm all over the place. Um, and the biggest thing is, first thing I do is get up and have breakfast. I think breakfast is such a big part of, part of my day anyway. Um, to get that feeling, I started the day, I had my breakfast, and then I continue on. Um, after breakfast, my first thing I do is I do my database. I do five, I add five clients to the database. 
Um, then depending where I got going, if I've got appointments set up, I do the appointments, if I got meetings, um, and if I don't, then I go to paperwork. Um, and then to end the day, I do calls. Um, and I do a minimum of five calls, up, but up to 20 in a day. So that's pretty much my day. And that is your schedule every day. That's an, that's an awesome schedule. Um, would you say that bold helped you adopt that schedule? Is that yep. what sort of ignited that? Yep. Okay. I did. I did not do that before bold. Okay. I was all uh, over the place before bold. And part of it was I didn't have business really. I had a little bit of business before bold, but not much. Okay. You, you've mentioned bold a couple times, Bruce, and I know that you and I have had conversations on a couple of different occasions about um, what you feel uh, or how you feel bold impacted your business. Um, what specifically was it about bold that you think triggered um, your passion or your willingness to make the phone calls uh, that you hadn't been doing before? Um, well, I think it was, the biggest thing was gave me the confidence to make calls and not worry about if I got rejected or I shouldn't say rejected, but, you know, pushed away, um, to continue on and do it, not say, oh, this didn't, I just made two calls and both of them, you know, didn't even get nothing out of it or even any warm fuzzy out of it. So I just kept going. Um, and that's what I think why I continue to do that, because once I started to do that, I got business um, because I was making calls, not necessarily from the people I called. They referred me and which was also nice. I love that. Uh, I'm, and I'm glad that you hit on that point, because um, I think uh, so there's a couple of things. You're so many good nuggets coming out of this. A um, couple different things. One of them is I think a lot of agents. Um, when they ask the question, when they make the call and it's a, no, I'm not looking right now. Uh, it's, it's the immediate like, okay, well, you know, thanks. And, and they're quick to like get off the phone. Cause it, it feels like, even though it's not really a form of rejection, it feels like uh, a form of rejection. Right. And what they do is they forget to ask the next question, which it sounds like you're doing, which is okay. Well, thanks for taking the time to think about that. While I have you on the phone, can you think of anyone else in your life at work, in the family, at church, at school, whatever, that might be thinking of buying or selling? So I'm guessing that you have adapted that as a part of your script. That's a part of, uh, I think the script that a lot of people um, fail to think to do. And it sounds like it's worked well for you. Am, am I correct in assuming that? Yes. When I end a call, it's always, that's my last thing is, you know, I understand you don't have, you know, you're not looking to buy yourself, but do you know of anybody that is family, friends, you know, I would appreciate their name and number. You know, that's why mm -hmm. I always end it. Awesome. Um, another thing that you said was that, uh, you know, bold helped you get over that fear of making phone calls and the fear of rejection. And I would venture to say that the majority of agents who aren't making phone calls right now, that's the reason why they're not doing it. It's that fear of rejection. It's the fear of, uh, of sounding, you know, silly, or some of them have used the word stupid, which I don't like. Um, but you know, I, I think just human nature kicks in and we have those insecurities. Uh, what was it specifically that Bold taught you or an activity that you participated in that helped you get over that fear of rejection when maybe before, you know, it was working against you? I think, I think a lot of it at Bold was when we got in the groups or, and had to stand up, the whole group stood up and we had to do scripts to each other. Um, that was the start of it, because I was even afraid to do that. And once I did that, and I was comfortable doing that, I just transferred that over to the phone calls. Um, and, and the other thing I think that I, that I really stress is, is be positive about it. Don't go into the phone call negative, saying, oh, this here's another one that I'm not gonna get, but I'm gonna do it. Be positive about it. And I think that's helped me no matter who I call, I'm always positive about it. And I know I wasn't before. Um, and not because I don't like to talk to people. I love talking to people. I'm a, everybody says I'm a people's person, but 
when you get rejected, you're always, like you said, I think you, you naturally pull back then because you're afraid of the rejection again. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You got to stay positive and say, okay, that one didn't work out. This next one's going to work out. So you just have to stay positive. Yeah. I, th I think what you said right there is so important. And, you know, having that positive mental attitude when you're calling is, is really important because that, that does bleed into the conversation, whether we realize it or not, right? Whether we're right. coming to the phone call with an abundant mindset or a scarcity mindset, they're going to pick up on that. Um, do you do you make affirmations a part of your daily routine in order to stay in that positive mindset, or it's just a choice that you make? It's just a choice I make. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, whatever whatever works for you, right? To kind of stay in that in that mindset and. To your point earlier as well, I think when you start making these phone calls and you start to get some traction with them and you start landing listing appointments or you start, you know, getting those referrals from friends and family, uh, then it almost becomes like a drug and you can't get enough of it, right? Right, exactly. So Yep. I think it's, I, I think a lot of times it's just breaking through and it sounds like this was the case for you, that initial fear of being judged or rejected. And once you've gotten, you know, some, um, business from it and laid that groundwork, um, it, it just becomes easier. Right. right. Yep. Exactly. Okay. All right. Moving on to listing presentations. I'm curious about, uh, what, tips you might give for a great listing presentation or what you feel has perhaps worked well in some of your listing presentations that you've done? Cause your listings have doubled since last year. Yep. Yeah. So um, basically what I do when I do my listing presentation is I start from scratch, whether it's an old buyer, or, I mean, an old seller who's done it before, but maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago, or it's a new person that, it has recently per or purchased and now they're selling again. That kind of went through it not too long ago, but I start from scratch with them through the whole process. And I want them to be comfortable with me and go through everything that they need to know because I don't want later somebody to say, well, you didn't tell me this or you didn't tell me that. So I, got, I have a presentation, a step-by-step -step that I go through with everybody the same way um, and, and just up front with what I'm going to do for them and how hard I'm going to work for them. And I would anticipate they will be happy in the end. So do you find having that presentation, Bruce, and doing things in a systematic way each time, um, you know, recognizing that sometimes it can differ, right? Depending yep. on the yep. people. How the, yep. how the listing presentation goes, but do you find that having that and having a system in place helps keep you um, on, on task or on track with the presentation? And is there anything in particular in your listing presentation that you feel has impacted or made that really big difference in you doubling your listings this year? Um, I don't think anything particularly in the presentation has, has encouraged that, but I really try to stick to, we may get off track for a little bit, but I get back track, I, I get us back on track because I want them to know everything from start to finish. And sometimes, cause people sometimes cut it short. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. Well, I say, yes, you know that, but you know, let me just finish and then we'll continue on. Um, I want them to know that because like I said, I don't want something to come up at the end and then they come back on me and, and say that. And I've, I've noticed that since I started doing the listing presentations, I've gotten numerous comments of how well I did it and also that they ended up not knowing some of the things mm -hmm. that, or they had forgotten. So I would venture to say too, if you're going up against other agents for this listing, um, there are a lot of agents out there that don't have listing presentations. Um, I was one of them that didn't have one for years. I just, I kind of had my scripts internalized and I would go through kind of the same system, but I didn't have an actual listing presentation. And, uh, when I did start using one and I did go up against other agents that weren't, uh, clients would always comment on the fact that, you know, um, 
other people who they didn't met with, who they met with didn't have one. It comes across, I think, as too just an extra level of professionalism when you do have that and you are presenting it. Um, speaking of listings, um, you know, listings is uh, is one of the three L's in the MREA, and I'm curious as to how you might be using your listings as additional leverage in your business. Well, it. <clears throat> In my business, I have found out in the last three months, um, and pretending to the three L's, list, leads, listings, and leverage, that I am getting from every listing, I am getting three to four more leads from each listing. Okay, that's huge. And we need to know, how are you doing that? <laughs> and basically, I'm getting them because I'm getting phone calls of people that seen the listing, number one, they're still wondering um, if, a, if the listing is available for either them, themselves or somebody else. And then also they like to look the listing, they're looking to list, they want me, they want to know if I would look, be entertain the idea, so. Okay. So how are you tracking how most people are finding your listings? Is it boosted Facebook ads? Is it the newspaper? Um, how are they finding your listings? It's Facebook and um, Zillow or um, Just online. Realty. Yeah, online. Yep. Okay. Are you doing the boosted Facebook ads through command, Bruce? No, I'm not. Okay. So um, when you say they're seeing it on Facebook, is that just you posting it like on your personal page or your business page? Correct. Both. Yes. I post on both my personal and my, and my business. And yes, that's where they see it. Cause I ask them. Okay. I want to challenge you the next time you get a listing to have Lisa help you put a boosted Facebook Boost. ad, because if you're getting three to four leads off of you, just posting it on your uh, personal page and your business page, holy smokes, I can't imagine the amount of leads that you get if you did a boosted ad. And I would also venture to say that in Winona, you're probably one of the few, you would probably be one of the few, if not the only person doing boosted doing Facebook that. ads. So I want to challenge you the next time you get um, a listing to just try that out and then report back to me how it goes, because um, I would venture to say you'd get a ton of traction. Okay. Yep. I can do um, that. Thank you for sharing that. What would you consider, I'm just curious, your best value proposition when you do meet with clients? Um, basically, when I first start out, I, I ask them if they know who Keller Williams is. Some do, some don't. Um, I just tell them that they're, you know, we're the biggest real estate company in the world. Um, and then also, I, I my biggest thing to them is I've kind of said this before, is I wanna make this an easy transaction from start to finish. So you don't even know that we kind of went through the whole thing. It was easy, smooth, that kind of stuff. Um, and, that, and that's what I try to do. I try to give you a service that you will be happy about all the way through it. Yes, we will have ups and downs maybe, but we will get through those. So that's basically, you know, so it, it's just having that honest conversation and setting some expectations ahead of time, it sounds like yep. for yep. you. Okay. Yep. So uh, since we're kind of along the lines of uh, setting expectations, what is your best piece of advice for setting expectations with your clients early on? Um, I would say being positive. I know I've said that before, but I'm a positive guy. I always have been. Um, I coached for many years, so that's where I got my positivity. When you're a coach, you got to be positive. And I, I kind of transfer that over to my real estate business. I'm always positive. Um, don't, and I also don't tell them something that we can't achieve. Um, don't make it greener than it really is until you know you can achieve that. Um, but the biggest bottom line is I'm positive and, and I just, tell them that we'll get through whatever happens along the way, we'll get through and it's going to be a smooth transaction. So just being honest, setting this expectation, perhaps maybe under promising and over delivering versus, you know, over promising and under delivering. Correct. Is what yep. I'm hearing. Okay. Yep. 
So um, you mentioned being positive, which I think is huge, you know, for to be an attractor, for people to want to work with you, right? Because people yeah. want to do business with people, we say it all the time, who they know, like, and trust, that are positive people, fun to be around. Um, nine times out of 10, you know, a potential client is going to choose someone who they know they're going to enjoy working with, even if they're brand new, versus a more seasoned agent who, you know, might not be showing up as positively. Um, we're in challenging times right now. And sometimes it is a real challenge to keep that positive, you know, mental attitude at the forefront. Um, so, so in trying to maintain that positive mindset, I'm curious to hear what you're hearing from your clients as some of their biggest concerns in today's climate. How are you addressing that and remaining positive, that positive person? Um, the biggest thing I, I've, I hear right now in the Winona area is not enough inventory. Um, you know, and I have that, I see that because I have four to four to six clients right now that I've been looking, we've been looking for houses for them, but that we just can't find one that they like. And it's just because of the inventory. There's not enough there, um, in their price range. Um, but I, again, I, re, I always say, we'll, we'll find you something. Be positive, stay positive, keep looking, I'll keep looking, we'll find you something down the road. But that's the biggest thing is, is the inventory. Everybody, you know, we have the high inventory, we have the under 100,000 inventory, which there's a lot of that inventory, but nobody wants to do that anymore. So the middle inventory of 100 to 250, we don't have a ton of it, and which makes it tough. Um, but I, I just, again, I remain positive and say, we will find you something. We will keep at it. So. Okay. Just reassuring them. Yep. Yep. Um, with command and with us, we've been talking a lot about leverage with the ALC and in recent team meetings, you know, how we can leverage different things within our business to help us focus on the income producing activities. So I'm curious, what applet and command do you use the most to help you run and grow your business? Um, I use two of them. One is the first one is contacts. Um, that's because that's where every to me, everything is. Um, as I said, I, I work on my database a lot just to keep it up to snuff. Um, and then the other thing is tasks. I use ta I try to use tasks as much. Um, so it keeps me in line and what I need to do. Who do I need to reach out to when and uh, how when was the last time that I, I touched base with them? So okay. <laughs> Awesome. I love that. All right. I have two more questions that I want to get through quickly. We, we have yep. a guest speaker that's going to speak for the last few minutes of the team meeting. The okay. first one is what do you attribute your success to, or what, what would you most attribute your success to Bruce? Um, let's see, that would be three words, bold and be positive. <laughs> okay. I like it. It's a simple message, but it's very effective. Very, very effective. Okay. Yep. Last question. Why KW? Um, I have just been integrated with awesome people um, throughout this whole process. From day one, when I got welcomed uh, to KW and all the training that is done, all the positivity, um, it's just been great. I, I could not see being with any other real estate company. Um, it would be, I don't know how I would do, how I would do, but just like I said, the, the education part, the able to get on the phone call and find an answer real quick. Um, it's just been great. And I mean, if I had to recommend anybody to, or a, a real estate company, anybody, it would be KW in a heartbeat, um, over anybody else. It ju it's been a great two years or almost two years for me and uh, I would, I'm glad I did it, so. Uh, well, thank you for that. We're, we're, we certainly are glad you did too. That 
almost two years has gone by in the blink of an eye, I feel like. Um, So I just want to thank you again so much for the positivity that you always bring to the table. Um, You know, whenever you pop into Rochester, it's with a huge smile. It's with a lot of gratitude. It's with a positive mindset. We just absolutely positively enjoy uh, as much time as we can get with you. We wish it was more, but, um, we appreciate the time that you took out of your day today, Bruce. It's, it's so important for us to share our stories with others so that they realize and understand that they can do it too. Um, so I want to thank you again for your time today. Thank and you, Aaron. yes, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks um, for having me. Yes, absolutely. And then before you guys log off here, I want to introduce, uh, Kirk and I hope I pronounced your last name properly, Kirk, because we haven't met yet. Rubato? Rubato. Rubato. Okay. Tomato, I'll... tomato, oh. you know, whatever you want to call me. I'm I'm forever call... going to mess it up Mess it up now that you gave me that analogy. There you go. Um, I cold work, so I'm fine with that. <laughs> Kirk is from a wellness company called Profile by Sanford, and I don't know really anything about them, so I'm super curious to learn more. Take it away, Kirk. Well, it's funny is you're not the only one. So uh, Profile by Sanford is uh, Sanford Health is where it come from. Uh, I don't know if you guys know where Sanford House is, but mostly in the Dakotas. It, uh, it's kind of like Mayo over here. Um, it's Mayo over there. So it's uh, Sanford House. What it is, it's a uh, customized program that we do for each of our members. Uh, we focus on health coaching and building skills, but also the weight loss program part of it. So there's three phases. It's called Reboot and Reduce. And what we're doing on that phase is we're rebooting the body by reducing your calories. So then you'll take in our products. But our main focus of the whole journey is to get to sustain, which is meaning that when you get to sustain uh, through our ADAPT, our, which is our second phase, is we'll start pulling our food away and bringing in whole foods. So what eventually happens is when you hit that sustain or your goal, you're on whole foods and you're not dealing with our products. I would never tell you not to take our products anymore because that would be kind of a suicide mission. We don't want to do that. What we would focus on is if you still like our products, great. Keep having them because they're easy. But our whole focus is to make sure you reach your goal. And when you reach your goal, you're able to do the things by uh, any events that you're in, uh, your hunger and cues. So we build skills that way with the coaching to make sure that you guys are, are able to understand that, hey, there's a whole lot of different things that happen in our life, stressful eating, you guys, especially with moving around uh, house to house or, or having those phone calls at, at midnight and making sure you're ready by six o'clock in the morning because you got other things you got to take care of. So those activities, we want to help you with those, building those skills so you're mindful of what you're doing and being successful on the back end. So when you get to sustain or your goal, that you're able to do that long term instead of something that's short term. So the coaching is very important, but also our products are very important to start off with. But we want to get you to that point where you're not worried about our products and that you're able to uh, sustain your your goal, which usually is weight loss, um, long term. Awesome. Well, that was a great introduction. Huh. Um, how, how did you connect with us? I'm just curious. Do you know one of the agents in our office or? Uh, yeah, I know. I know Meg. So, I mean, that's oh, okay. <laughs> well around, the, around the, <laughs> the community. And, uh, so I've known her very well. Okay, uh, for many awesome. years, um, we've worked together with uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce and things of that sort. But the biggest focus is we're trying to reach out to as many people as we can. And Omega has been with you guys for a long time and she's been great. So yeah. it's very easy to, to get that phone call. Um, and we're just trying to get our, our name out there and get people to understand what we do. There is a membership to this. Um, but what we really focus on is having people come in learn about our program, see if it's a good fit, first of all. If it's a great fit, then we move forward. We'll always have a, a special for people that are uh, from uh, KW. So, I mean, there's always things that we can do to that to make sure it works for you. Um, but the main focus is getting our name out, and this is a great way to do it. Awesome. Well, we appreciate the information. I'll speak for myself. Uh uh, present company may or may not be excluded, but real estate is a tough gig. And 
and agents are known for working around the clock. Uh, I've certainly been known over the years to, you know, put my self care and health at the bottom of the list. Yeah. And I am recognizing the older I get just how dangerous that is and how important it is to live a healthy lifestyle. So we appreciate you, you know, sharing the information and look forward to, you know, some additional information. If you want to, you know, drop it off at the office, we'll make sure that we distribute it to the agents. And, um, you know, I, I, I think, uh, bettering our, our healthy lifestyles is, is a good thing for everyone. So we appreciate the information, Kirk. Yeah, and really we are at uh, 1123 Civic Center Drive. I'm sure you guys all know where that is, the Barlow Plaza. If you guys are interested, definitely come in, get a free consult tour. Um, we can definitely sit down and talk about if this is a good plan, good situation for you, and then we move from there. Awesome, well, thank you. Thank you for you guys' time and uh, Anyone that's interested, I'm going to throw a little chat in there in my phone number. So you can reach to me at any time and uh, we can set up an appointment. Okay, awesome. And then this is recorded as well and we promote it out to the agent. So we'll make sure that we highlight the fact that your you know, info in, is in there as well if they're um, looking to find it. Yes. Thank All right. you very much for your time. And Yeah, and thanks, Megan, for setting that up. I'm going to cut you guys loose two minutes before noon here. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for logging on today and stay safe. I don't know what it's looking like there in Rochester right now, but it's a blizzard here in Lakeville. No <laughs> and, one here. Yeah, yeah. Have to be working from home. So please be careful out on the roads because uh, there's probably some ice underneath that too because we had freezing rain this morning. Oof. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye.